Hey guys, CryptoLazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. In a recent video, we looked at uh, the new version of Graxpert, which is a free tool. Initially, it was meant to do background extraction on deep space astrophotographs. So you could remove like the gradient caused by things like light pollution or moonlight, etc., easily from your images. And Graxpert in version 3.0, which stays completely free, added a module to do denoising of the image. And this was an AI based noise reduction that works really well in my tests in that other video. And I compared it even to a paid plugin called noise exterminator that costs around 60 US dollars. And the results were, in my opinion, very similar, at least on my sample pictures. But in the comments to that video, while there were a lot of people that were talking about like the uh, advantages and disadvantages of the denoising in Graxpert, versus Noise Exterminator, there's quite a few comments that told me basically neither of those tools held a candle to the denoising tool available in the Topaz Lab Photo AI software. And so I wanted to have a look. And basically Topaz, or Topaz Labs actually, is a company that created several tools. One of them was called uh, Topaz Denoise. And I've bought that uh, tool a while back and I'm actually on the latest version of that tool. But that tool was since discontinued. It's no longer sold. And now they have an all-in-one tool that does denoising amongst other things called Photo AI. And only that new tool called Photo AI is now available and gets developed. So I still have access to the old Topaz Denoise as well as the new Photo AI. And that new photo AI costs 200 US dollars. I'm just on the trial version of that thing. But I thought it would be a good idea to look at how well Topaz Denoise works, like the latest version of Topaz Denoise, how well photo AI works, both are from Topaz Labs, and then compare them maybe quickly to Noise Exterminator and the denoising algorithm in Graxpert. So let's get to it. Oh, and before that, this video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. More about that later in the video. Anyway, a bit more about Topaz Denoise. If you're a very long time viewer of the channel, you will or may have seen a video of mine where I actually used Topaz Denoise on images. And while I saw that it worked really well, I saw several things. It didn't work very well on images that included stars, which can be sort of an issue with deep sky astrophotography. But also it did something that I really didn't like, which was it basically seemed to be adding details to the image that don't exist. As if someone with like a pencil was like saying like, hmm, this shape looks kind of like that. And maybe if we were to un to deblur this, I would like draw this insta inside, like kind of it became an artist's view of the object. And I didn't really like that. So with the comments that I saw on my video about the Graxpert, I'm like, maybe this changed. So let's have a look. I'll go quickly about the stars first. I tested on images with stars and definitely you want to remove the stars before processing in Topaz Denoise or Photo AI. Both are not very good with stars. The stars will get over sharpened compared to the rest of the image. And yes, I'm saying over sharpened, even though we're only doing the noise, which is one something that is weird about those Topaz Labs tools. It's almost impossible, actually not almost, it is completely impossible to separate denoising from sharpening of the image. And that is a problem. Anyway, our first sample that we are going to test on is this image of the Andromeda Galaxy M31. And this image was taken by me from Tokyo. Uh, so it has a fair bit of noise. If we look at the background, it's very mottled. There's a lot of, uh, let's say, like grain in there. And uh, even like in some details of the, uh, the galaxy, we see noise and that's how things are. After all, Tokyo is a light polluted city. So the first thing that we want to do before we can use uh, Topaz Denoise, which is here, or Photo AI, which is there, it's to remove the stars. And for that, I used a paid plugin for PixInsight called Star Exterminator by the same person who builds Noise Exterminator. But you could use a free tool called Starnet++ as well. That would work almost just as well. So this is how my uh, Andromeda galaxy looks like without stars, which makes very little sense because the whole galaxy is made of billions of stars. But details. And so then what I did is I saved it as a TIFF file and then I tested it both in Topaz Denoise 
which is the version that you can no longer buy, and Photo AI. Let's first look at Topaz Denoise. So Topaz Denoise, in when I last tested it, I had found that the AI model called Clear was giving me the best results. Now that I've updated Topaz Denoise to the latest version and the last version that will ever be made for this particular tool, which is from February 2023, so over a year ago, I see that the standard uh, denoising is actually working the best for me. And we can actually start with, okay, Topaz Denoise, with the default recommended options upon opening the Galaxy. On the left is the image without the denoise, and on the right is the image with the denoise. And at first glance, we can see the background is getting denoised quite a lot. The companion galaxy is getting denoised quite a lot. Uh, it's getting some good, decent results in terms of denoising. And we can zoom in, and the zooming in is actually give a, giving us pretty decent results. Although you can see if you look, if you look at this area here compared to, uh, to here, I feel like there is too much sharpening going on in that if I really go and look at the details, and I don't know how much of that is going to translate to uh, YouTube, but it does look to me like some of the details are a bit invented. Again, as if I had like a pencil or something like that. So let's remove like the default preferences and putting enhanced sharpness to the lowest possible version. By the way, it tells us that if I want to use even less sharpening, I should use the low light algorithm. I tried that, it was horrible. So uh, we won't do that. And now that I have my enhanced sh sharpness to the lowest setting possible, I actually like what I see. We get some really good noise reduction that doesn't seem to murder the details of the image. And at the same time, I don't really see anywhere where it's inventing from scratch details that don't exist. And so to me, this is a winner and a big, big enhancement compared to Topaz de Noise as it was the last time I had tested it, probably several years ago. So I was really surprised and I was like, okay, probably the newest version with even better improvements will be even better and that's going to be in Photo AI. Let's have a look at Photo AI. Okay, so Photo AI, uh, in the interface, you can add your enhancements. And by default, uh, Photo AI will decide what it wants to add, and then you need to remove them and add them back. So here we have uh, the noise with the uh, default parameters. And uh, we have the original image on the left and the processed image on the right. And what always shocks me with Topaz the noise is that I can see immediately that the image on the right, uh, especially if you look at the details in this band of nebulosity, looks so much sharper, better, like it, it draws my eye in, and it, on the face of it, it looks like an awesome image. Now let's go and look at the details, and this is where, to me, I don't really like anymore what I'm seeing. Look at the before on the left and the after on the right, or as I'm cl clicking before and after. Now this, is far too over sharpened. And you can see lots of squiggles and dots and squiggles all over the place. And those are imagined. They're not real. They look awesome. But look how, how things change when I switch between the two modes. They are like squiggles that appear all over the place. And again, they're not real, but they look awesome. But with Topaz Denoise, so the old version, I was able to uh, set the enhanced sharpness to the lowest setting. So with Photo AI, I should be able to do the same thing with like minor the blur to zero. And I set it to zero. And while it is slightly less sharpened than before, it's still the same. We are inventing details out of thin air. And I don't like that. This is kind of where I draw the line because if you're using tools like Noise Exterminator or the Gra Graxpert Denoise, those tools, they're just doing selective blurring, smart selective blurring. They do not add details to the image. Even if you're using something like Blur Exterminator, another AI-based process, Blur Exterminator will only smartly approximate a mathematical function called deconvolution. It does not try to draw details in, it just approximates a mathematical function that we can use manually anyway. This Photo AI is completely different.
And that's what that's some of the issues that I can see with AI tools used or maybe abused in the hobby. And by the way, it's I think it's very important for us as photographers to get more and more aware of the capabilities of AI. And I personally like to delve into the details and understand actually how AI works. And one of the best ways to do that is to use brilliant.org. And with Brilliant, you'll be learning by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, AI, and more. When I'm using Brilliant, I can tell that the platform was designed to be really effective because all of the lessons are very hands-on and they let me play with the concept that I'm trying to learn. So it's really effective because it sticks with me compared to like just watching videos. And what I really love about this approach is that in each lesson, there will be problems to solve and stuff to do. So it's actually really fun and it really sticks in your mind at the same time. I'm becoming a better thinker each time. So I'm building my problem solving skills without even meaning to. And because to me, it's so rewarding and fun to be solving problems, it also becomes addictive. And that's a good addiction because now I've developed a powerful daily learning habit. And I always find myself like opening up brilliant and like taking a lesson rather than doing some mindless scrolling on social media. It's really powerful. And if we're talking about AI, we have to talk about programming and languages like Python, which are one of the most popular languages for AI. And it's really good to see that Brilliant has a lot of programming courses. You can get familiar with Python and like be building your own programs on day one and while you're learning essential coding elements and you're starting to think like a programmer. I really enjoy this approach. So if like me, you want to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, you can visit brilliant.org slash quivlazygeek or simply click on the link in the description and you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Okay, we are done with uh, Brilliant, which I really recommend. But now let's also look at what the image looks like via Graxpert and uh, Noise Exterminator. So let's go back to PixInsight and on this image, I can uh, zoom in and let's see what Noise Exterminator does to this image. And you can see it does a pretty good job at uh, doing the noise reduction. To me, it's like if I'm looking at the background, it looks very similar to uh, Topaz Denoise or uh, Photo AI Denoise module. And at the same time, if I go like uh, before, after, uh, before, after, it preserves the details, but it does not add any detail. It does not do any sharpening. It does just denoising. And I also processed this uh, with uh, Graxpert Denoise. And this is how it looks like. It actually looks very decent, uh, even compared to Noise Exterminator. Although the AI that does that selective blurring has only been uh, trained on linear data. And I think it actually does a much worse job in the background compared to Noise Exterminator. And likely it's, uh, it's due to how it was trained. Okay, let's quickly look at another image. This time it's a nebula. It's basically the heart of the heart nebula. And uh, yeah, we have a, a bunch of noise here uh, and uh, we need to remove the stars. So I can uh, save it as star remove .tiff and then have a look at Topaz Denoise and of course the Denoise tool in the latest photo AI. So let's look at Topaz Denoise. And if I said to the automated uh, parameters that, the, uh, that Topaz Denoise would like to apply to the image, and I zoom in, I feel like just like before, we have some really good denoising. Like, look at this result. It doesn't kill the, de the details, but it really denoises the image very well. It actually also adds far too much detail. There's like so much bumpiness in these nebulae details that it's like not realistic at all. So I don't want to use the defaults. I want to put the sharpness enhancement to one and now we're getting the best of both worlds. We have a slight amount of sharpening without inventing new details in the main nebula at the center while having really good noise reduction across the whole image. And that is exactly the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, the, the image on the left, I can feel the noise when I look at it, even with that uh, zoom level. And the image on the right is absolutely what I would choose. So I think, again, this tool that's no longer available is now really good for our purpose. <laughs> Let's have a look now at Photo AI, the denoising module, so the successor to Topaz Denoise. 
let me open the Nebula photo and let's look at the, uh, the noise tool. And uh, we can see that actually it is not as bad as it was on the image of the Andromeda galaxy, especially if I have like minor de blur as here set to the lowest value. Uh, but at the same time, like there's definitely like weird bumpiness and details that get created and that don't really exist in the initial image, especially like in this little area here, in this area there, along the arm here. It's just it, not perfectly natural in my opinion. And, and to me, it's a regression. Photo AI 3 here that I have here as a trial version, it's a regression compared to the latest version of Topaz Denoise that can could finally apparently be used for proper denoising without inventing details. Okay, let's have a look now at how uh, Noise Exterminator and Graxbert did on that same image. Oh, before we do that, like, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments about Topaz Denoise or Photo AI, if you're using it and how well it's been working for you, or if you're planning on using it or anything else you want to put in the comments. It really helps the channel out. If you like the video, that helps a lot as well. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, in which case, welcome. If you want to support the channel even more and you're planning on buying anything from Amazon, Agena, Hypon Scientific, etc., if you do so after clicking the links that I have in the description, it will help me at no cost to you. And if you want to help me even more directly, you can join the channel as a member using the join button next to the subscribe button, or you can join my Patreon as a paid member link down or right on the description. Uh, also, there's another way if you want cool merch like this one, I have a merch store with this design that is actually really cool. So if you want to get something in return, that's also one way I'll have the link in the description as well. Okay, enough said, let's look at the results of uh, Noise Exterminator on this particular image. So this is before and after. And I feel Noise Exterminator, just like before, does an amazing job at smoothing out the noise without killing the details. And at the same time, if I go before and after without adding any details, that's because Noise Exterminator does not do any sharpening whatsoever. And I have the same thing with Graxpert noise uh, denoising, basically. And we have a very similar result. But if I look at uh, Noise Exterminator on the left, Noise Exterminator compared to uh, Graxpert on the right, I feel that Noise Exterminator was better at preserving the details. Graxpert has blurred the main subject more than Noise Exterminator has. And I think it's very visible on this image. Again, I think it goes back to Graxpert have been, having been trained on linear data. So it sh normally should not be used at the very end of your process, but at the start of your process. So what will you be using on your images? Will you be using Graxpert? Will you be using Noise Exterminator? Or maybe you have the old version of Topaz Denoise and you'll be trying that out after this video. Or maybe you don't care and you like having this kind of like overdone sharpness that invents details and you'll be using Photo AI. Let me know down in the comments, like the video, subscribe. All of this helps the channel out tremendously. So thank you so much, guys. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. You guys truly make the channel possible. Uh, but more important than all of that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.